Hello everyone. How are you doing today? I hope everyone is fine and healthy. I welcome you all to another lecture of Zenith Academy Online. I am Shravika Jamnik, your teacher for today. And together we are going to learn a very simple yet very essential lesson today. Natural disasters. So let's begin. Our first natural disaster is earthquake. An earthquake is the sudden movement we feel on the surface of earth. Let's see the definition. An earthquake is defined as the sudden shaking of the surface of earth due to violent movements or vibrations inside the earth. Our earth is made up of many layers. The inner two layers, the inner core and outer core, are very hot. Our earth also has tectonic plates and these tectonic plates are in constant motion. The movement of these tectonic plates is driven by heat within the earth. During an earthquake, the tremors that are formed due to the movement of tectonic plates. When the movement is very sudden, an earthquake is formed. So, a tremor travels from the interior to the surface of earth. As you can see here, here probably the tectonic plate movement was very sudden and due to this, the tremor has traveled to the surface and caused a crack and this is an earthquake. There are two important terms. Focus, the point underground where the disturbance occurs first and epicenter is the point on earth's surface which lies above the focus. Let's take a look at what these are. As you can see, the focus is the point where the earthquake has originated. This is where the tectonic movement was very sudden and therefore it formed a crack. Now right above the focus is the epicenter. Now that we know what an earthquake is, let's see how to measure it. The measuring of an earthquake is done with the help of a seismograph. It detects the strength of the waves. Let's see what a seismograph looks like. This is a seismograph. Its parts are, there's a base. The base is always fixed. There's a weight. The movement of this weight during the earthquake will determine the waves. Here's a rotating drum. Around the rotating drum is paper. So as and when the vibrations will occur, the needle here that is attached to the weight will show us the vibrations by drawing them on the paper that is rolled around the rotating drum. Let's see a seismogram. What is a seismogram? The pattern obtained by seismograph, the pattern that is obtained as we saw by the seismogram is known as a seismogram. Okay, let's see what a seismogram looks like. Here, this is what a seismogram looks like. The needle is drawing these patterns and then a seismogram is formed. It helps us to determine the Richter value of the earthquake. The intensity of an earthquake is measured by a Richter scale. And this Richter scale will give us certain Richter values. If the Richter value is 3, the earthquake cannot be felt. If the Richter value is between 3 and between 4 and 5, will feel tremors and if the Richter value is greater than 7, the earthquake has a capacity to destroy entire cities. 
so we have to be very careful if the richter value is greater than 7 let's move on the effects of an earthquake shaking of building this shaking will occur if the building is resisting the movement of the ground as you can see the ground is moving here but because the building is resisting this movement it is moving in backward direction earthquake can also cause collapsing of a building see here the earth vibrated a bit and then the building collapsed so an earthquake is very very dangerous it also causes landslides in hilly areas if you don't know what a landslide is landslide occurs when the soft soil or the soft earth on the surface cannot keep hold of the ground below it and therefore it slides can you see how the earth is sliding here along with the trees it is sliding this is known as a landslide it can also trigger a tsunami in oceans and lakes tsunami is a natural disaster we are going to study let's see so what has happened here is due to the tectonic plate movement this part of land has tried to move above this part of land and this sudden movement has caused an upward wave over here and this will give rise to a tsunami earthquake can also lead to fire in case of damage to power lines what are the precautions we can take we can make our buildings quake safe let's see what these are see in this case the building is not resisting the earthquake a special technology was developed in tokyo where the base of the building the base of the building had very tiny wheels so in case of an earthquake these tiny wheels moved along with the earthquake to a certain distance and therefore the building did not resist the movement and hence it did not collapse interesting right we can we also have to evacuate buildings and move to an open space very very necessary because if the building is not quake safe then it can collapse any time and to prevent this we have to evacuate the building and move to an open space we should not use escalators or lifts because they can stop any time or they can have a power failure and cause a fire so it's very dangerous do not use them the technique that is suggested all around the world by the governments is drop cover and hold it means that first you drop down and you search for a place like a table or probably a bed that can save you from the collapse of very heavy materials on your head cover in this case means two things cover your head and also cover your entire body with the help of a table or a bed and then you just have to hold on till the earthquake disappears the next natural disaster is tidal waves and tsunami tidal waves are the rise and fall of sea waves we all love sea waves but only to a certain amount if the waves get too high or too low then it it is not safe anymore for us so let's see what causes this gravitational forces between sun moon and earth hmm let's see how that happens see here when the earth is getting aligned with the when the moon is getting aligned with the earth and the sun it creates a gravitational force which will pull 
pulled the waves towards itself you can see here and when it's not aligned it causes a low tide when it is aligned the gravitational forces are so strong that it causes high tide or very high waves see again now it's aligned and the waves are very high so huge volume of water is displaced and this displacement of huge water causes large wave generation what causes this displacement the displacement can be caused by volcanic eruption or underwater earthquake let's see here this is something we saw previously an earthquake occurring and because of it waves are formed the second thing is tsunami caused by an erosion what is erosion erosion when it occurs when a chunk of soil suddenly gets carried away with the water and this will create a vacancy over here and this vacancy needs to be filled with something and what is available in an ocean water so water takes up the position of this vacancy and therefore huge waves are formed the third reason for a tsunami is volcano in case a volcano occurs it will suddenly erupt a lot of hot hot rocks from the surface uh, from beneath the earth and this will also cause a lot of waves in the ocean high high waves which will give rise to tsunami okay here you can see a word magma let's see what magma is in the future slides so initially small waves are generated but these small waves swell up and as they move towards the shore gigantic waves are formed what are the effects we can make out because of the huge inflow of water to the surfaces it can submerge the low lying coastal areas and if they are very high speed waves then they'll collect a lot of debris that is a lot of waste along with the waves and it can destroy trees buildings and bridges see here a huge wave that has destroyed this entire area the low lying area what are the safety measures that you can take in case of a tsunami you can't really escape from a tsunami so it is very very necessary that you follow warnings and instructions telecasted by authorities please 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 follow everything that they are saying in case of a tsunami electrical supply of that region is also cut off this is to prevent any fires or any electric shocks as you know water is a good conductor of electricity and therefore it can give you shock so that's why electric electricity supply is also cut off next natural disaster is volcano volcano is the sudden eruption of magma now what is magma we'll find out first the definition of volcano a volcano is a mountain with an opening on its mouth and is connected to a pool of molten rocks present below the surface of earth the molten rocks written here this is nothing but the magma you have been hearing so due to the very very hotness that is inside the earth in the inner core and the outer core rocks melt and this forms magma molten rocks are called magma this is a cross section of a volcano you see this is a magma chamber and when the pressure gets too much and this will this magma chamber cannot be intact 
then it erupts through this mountain this opening here on the mountain is called a crater you can see the lava is flowing down the mountain this tunnel like passage of volcano of the magma chamber is called vent there is also mini cone that's forming over here and the volcano is a mountain and mountains are usually the shape of cone that's why it's called a cone okay so i hope all these labels are clear please take a look if you are still not able to understand it the opening is the crater this tunnel like passage these are the vents this is the vent this is a smaller vent and this is the magma chamber because the mountain is cone shaped it's labeled as a cone so let's see what a vent and a crater are so vent is the vertical tunnel through which magma passes as we saw earlier and crater is the opening from which the volcano shoots out the volcano is of three types i think you can understand from the pictures active volcano is when the lava is flowing dormant volcano is when the lava or the magma is pressured but there is no lava flowing and dormant volcanoes are very dangerous because you never know if it's going to remain calm like this or if it's suddenly going to erupt the third kind is the extinct volcano extinct volcanoes do not possess any danger they have released all the magma that's present inside them i hope you understood the natural disaster still now if you have any doubts please post them in the comments below thank you for being very patient if you like this video please like share and subscribe i'll see you soon take care everyone